Here we're going to be investigating confidence intervals for the parameter mu, the mean of the population. First of all, our sample mean x bar is what we call a point estimator of our population mean mu. We call it a point estimator because it, it is eventually going to take on a value like 13.4 or what have you, some other value, and that gives a single value that is going to provide an estimator of mu. Now, in the world of statistics, we don't feel that these single values, these point estimators, are all that hugely useful without some, uh, some measure of the uncertainty associated with that value. How close is x bar likely to be to mu? And there's a variety of ways of going about this, but one way we have of doing this is a confidence interval. Now our confidence interval for mu is going to be of the form x bar plus and minus some margin of error. And we're going to make a few assumptions here, and then based on those assumptions, we'll use some mathematical arguments to figure out the appropriate margin of error. Okay, so the assumptions of, in this particular setting are going to be that we have a simple random sample from a normally distributed population. That normally distributed population part is going to become less important as we get a larger and larger sample size due to the central limit theorem, but it is still an assumption here that we're working on. And also in this particular setting, we're going to need to know the value of sigma, which is the standard deviation of the population. Now, you might ask yourself, when would I know the value of sigma but not know the value of mu? And that is indeed going to be a, a rare situation, but it, this is a useful starting point for us, and it can be used as an approximation in a, in a variety of spots. So, our confidence interval is going to be of this form. Now first of all up here, if we look at this for a second, this notation can confuse some people, but this is going to turn out to be a value like 95% or 90% or anything we choose really. We could choose a 37.2% interval if we desired. 95% is the most common one that you'll see, uh, but we have control over that and we can pick that to be whatever, it is, uh, whatever we want. Now here is our margin of error. That's our margin of error. I'll just call that my MOE. And this sigma x bar is something we should recognize from before, which is just our sigma over the square root of n. And this is the standard deviation of the sample mean in repeated sampling. Or in other words, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar. So if we were to look at this now, that z alpha over 2 is tied in. It's tied in with our choice of our confidence level here. And how it's tied in is that when we have this confidence interval, we're going to let this middle area here be 1 minus alpha. And then the tail area combined, the two tail areas combined, have to be alpha. So this part is going to be alpha over 2. We split it up evenly into both tails here, alpha over 2. Now notation-wise, we want the z value that gives us alpha over 2 to the right, and we call that uh, z sub alpha over 2. So that's where our confidence interval is coming from. So now let's look at a couple of common ones that we might see. So let's say I want a 95% interval. So in the notation we're saying that 1 minus alpha times 100% is 95%, which implies here that my alpha is 0 0.05. So if I drew my little picture out, I'm saying what I want here is this middle area to be 0.95 and I want to split up the remainder into these two tails. So this is going to be 0.05 over 2 or 0 0.025 and this is going to be 0 0.05 over 2 or 0 0.025 and then we're going to call this z value z sub 0 0.025 the z value with 0 0.025 to the right. Now the standard normal distribution is symmetric about 0 so I could call this value over here minus z.025 and it so turns out that this value here is 1.96 and this value over here is minus 1.96 and you can find that from a table or a computer software. So our confidence interval for mu, if we want a 95% confidence interval for mu, it's going to be x bar plus and minus 1.96 times our sigma x bar. Now if we wanted to change our confidence level from 95 to something else, 90 is another common one, let's say. Uh, if we did this, this would imply, if we went through the logic as above, that our alpha is equal to 0 0.1. And if I draw my little picture here, what I'm saying is I want 0.9 of the area in the middle. And I want over here in this tail 0 0.05. And I want over in this tail 0 0.05. And this value here is my z.05. Now what this turns out to be is 1.645, and you can find that to two decimal places in a table, or three decimal places with computer software. And over here we're going to have minus 1.645.
So our 90% interval is going to be x bar plus and minus 1.645 times sigma x bar. Now the only thing that's changed between 95% and 90% interval is this constant here. Constant went from 1.96 to 1.645. So when we have a 90% interval, we've got a lower value of uh, z here, and we've got a narrower interval. And we've got a 95% interval, we've got a larger value of z, and therefore a wider interval. So if we want even more confidence, we're going to have to give something up by having a larger margin of error. So there's a balance between your choice of confidence level and how big your margin of error is. And overall, in a lot of spots, 95% is a pretty reasonable choice. So if we looked at a specific example here, let's say we sample nine values from a normally distributed population where sigma is six and we find a sample mean of 10. And we want a 95% confidence interval for mu. Well, what's this going to be? This is going to be my x bar, which is 10.0, plus and minus my appropriate z value, which we learned to be 1.96. And now I want sigma x bar, which is sigma over the root of n. So this is going to be times 6.0 over the square root of 9. Now if we work all this out, this is going to be 10.0 plus and minus 3.92. So our 95% margin of error is 3.92. We are 95% confident that our sample mean of 10 is within 3.92 of the true population mean. Now we could do the addition and subtraction, and we often do, and write it in interval notation here, and this is 6.08 to 13.92. And once again, the interpretation is quite important, but we'll look at that in more detail in another video. But we can be 95% confident that the population mean mu lies between these two numbers. Now we have to be a little careful about how that's phrased, so we'll look at that in more detail later.